Yeah, my neck is sore from agreeing so much. But I woke up with a sore neck and I'm pretty... Well, I got this pain in my neck. Welcome to the video for cervical spider healthy. Today, we will show it in three parts. Video introduce, table for contents and conclusion. The first part is video introduce. Before the start, we have some questions at the first. What's your gender? What's your age? And what's your care? Do you have following habit? How often do you take a break when walking, studying, or surfing the internet? No less or 0 0.5 hours to 3 hours. Do you feel the following when you finish the PC days after the walk or study? After the above situation appears, do you ever suspect that you have a cervical spider? Hello everyone, I'm Sun Jia Chen, a graduate student in project management at the University of Science Malaysia. And now, let me introduce part one. Subospondylysis is one of the most common orthopedic diseases. However, in recent years, with the development of society and the progress of the times, people's way of life and work is also changing. There are more and more low-headed people and the age of onset of cervical spondylysis is showing a trend of rejuvenation. Depending on the age of onset, cervical spondylysis that occurs in the age group of 16 to 35 years old is called youth cervical spondylysis. The trend of rejuvenation of cervical spondylysis not only causes serious physical and mental suffering of young patients, but also causes serious social problems. That's why we've created a project one video to elevate this health problem that plagues most people and addresses this social health problem. Thank you. Now, this is our reference video. Spondylosis. It is a general term for age-related wear and tears affecting the spinal discs in your neck. For most people, cervical spondylosis causes no symptoms. When symptoms do occur, they typically include pain and stiffness in the neck. Cervical spondylosis is a degenerative condition of the cervical region of the spine. This pathological condition can include facet joint osteoarthritis, bone spurs, or disc herniation. Cervical spondylosis causes narrowing of the vertebral artery canal and spinal canal, which compresses vessels and nerve structures. These changes can cause neurological symptoms. Ninety percent of the world's population over the age of 65 has cervical spondylosis but few people have symptoms of this condition. The cervical region of the spine is made up of seven vertebrae, which are designated as C1 through C7. The cervical region of the spine is very mobile. The mobility of the neck is ensured by the facet joints. The intervertebral discs and the spinal ligaments. Cervical vertebrae are different from other vertebrae because they have holes in the transverse processes called transverse foramina. Arteries, which supply the brain with blood, come from the neck through these holes. The cervical region of the spine is curved forward. This curving helps to absorb pressure, vibrations, and shock that occur with movement.
In most cases, cervical spondylosis occurs as a result of degenerative changes in the spine during aging. Intervertebral discs become dry and thin around the time you turn 40. Disc degeneration can cause herniation, one of the signs of cervical spondylosis. Aging in the cervical region of the spine also can lead to signs of spondylosis, such as bone spurs on the vertebral body or facet joints. With age, ligaments that bind the spine together become thickened and stiff. This condition also can cause symptoms of cervical spondylosis. Usually, cervical spondylosis occurs in older people, but some factors can contribute to its development early in life. One main cause is an injury to the cervical region of the spine. Holding your cervical spine in an uncomfortable position for prolonged periods can contribute to the development of spondylosis. Many scientists believe that cervical spondylosis is a genetic disease, which children inherit from their parents. The first and main symptom of cervical spondylosis is pain in the neck portion of the spine. It occurs due to compression of the spinal cord and nerve roots from disc herniation, bone spurs, or thickened ligaments. In most cases, the pain of cervical spondylosis increases with movement. The reason for this phenomenon is compression of nerve roots during movement of the cervical vertebrae. Pain in the arms may be a symptom of cervical spondylosis. It occurs due to compression of nerves that extend into the arms through the neck portion of the spine. Besides pain, cervical spondylosis can cause weakness, numbness, and cramping in the arms. These conditions arise due to nerve compression, too. In severe cases, cervical spondylosis can cause compression of the spinal cord and difficulty walking, loss of balance, and impaired coordination. In very rare cases, when cervical spondylosis causes compression of the spinal cord, bowel and bladder incontinence may occur. Provision of cervical spondylosis. First, strengthen neck exercise after work, such as neck exercise, but maintain and hour exer activities. Test the fixed position. Move your neck backwards. You feel nice stretch on the front side of your neck. 10 seconds static. And then 10 seconds dynamic. Well done, let's do another set. Again, 10 seconds static. And 10 seconds dynamic. Second point, you should Try a suitable pillow when you sleep. To complete a day work, you should be issued six or eight hours of sleep every day. It is especially important to choose a pillow. The next point, uh, learn to maintain a good mood. Keep a good mood every day and prevention cervical spine losses if you are under long-term mental stress. It will be difficult for the nickel muscles to relax. Uh, now this part, correct sitting posture. This is a short video. Done.
Treatment of cervical spondylosis. One, bed rest. In case of acute attack of cervical spondylosis, you should strictly rest in bed and minimize activities to avoid aggravating edema. Two, medical treatment. Treat the symptoms of inflammation, muscle tension, bone injury. Nerve compression and uh, vesicular compression. Manual therapy, including massage, anti-operations, bone grafting, and put them on either side of her spine, and rub down to the shoulders. And I'll come back up. Fingers on either side of the spine. Again, we don't want to touch any bones really. You can sort of work in between the crevices of the vertebrae, but you don't want to touch the bones. And this is just a simple effleurage using the fingertips. So we're going to be doing a little bit of massage with our thumbs. And I'm just making some circles here. And I'm basically rubbing in the top of the shoulder where it meets the beginning of the neck in between the vertebrae. And if you just feel some little spaces in there between muscle tissue and in between the vertebrae. You can kind of do little circles with your thumbs. 4. Surgical treatment, including minimally invasive surgery and open surgery. Precaution after surfing from cervical spiders. At first, you should establish a sense of importance. It's necessary to have a full understanding of the later harm of us. Pay more attention to the health, and you should know what is important to you. The second is go to a regular hospital for medical treatment in times. Avoid going to a smaller clinic with self authority. Avoid violent masking and unreasonable treatment. Causing secondary injury to the cervical spider. At the same time, relax pressures. Through regular physical treatment and medicine, cervical spiders can be treated. The last point is to improve unhealthy daily routines. When suffering from cervical spiders, you should exercise junctions, maintain a obstetric mode, and avoid walking with your head down from a long time again. When you come home late at night, your house is dark, what do you do when you first walk in the door? You look for the light switch and you turn it on. That is an automated behavior. That's a habit. Why do we do that? What are the intricacies that make us do that? You might say, well, pff, Ryan, it just makes sense. I can't see, I want to turn on the light. Exactly. And understanding why we do that, understanding the mechanics of that is how you are going to understand habits more. Behaviors that give satisfying consequences tend to be repeated until they become automatic. Now that is incredibly important for us to know because it helps us understand habits more. It helps us understand that if there's a reward and if we recognize the reward, our habit has a greater chance of sticking. And so now let's understand the mechanics of the habit. When we talk about habits, habits begin with a cue. Walking into a dark room accuses you to perform an action that's going to enable you to see inside the room. Because you have this craving for change, this change in state, you want to be able to see. So now you have to have your response. Your response is action. And it's by no conclusion. By watching this video, you will gain something. I hope that in the future life, we can improve everyone's awareness of preventing cervical spondylitis. Learning the good habits of preventing cervical spondylitis in the video and the precautions after surfing from cervical spondylitis. And reduce the distress of cervical spondylitis on daily life. I also hope to effectively improve the society of cervical spine health in young people in today's society, especially young office workers, and I also hope that through the study of training videos, get rid of bad habits, exercise, and no longer be plagued by so-called spondylizers. Well, this is the 
the reference video. A good lifestyle in our lives, from the understanding of cervical spiders, we know how important our urinary life habits are to us. And a good health life habits can help us maintain a good healthy body. Stop. It's important to remember our physical health affects our mental health and vice versa. What we do to our bodies makes a big difference to how we feel. Physical activity, diet, alcohol, smoking and drugs can all affect our mental health and well-being in different ways. So let's talk about them. Physical activity releases feel-good hormones called endorphins, which help us sleep and feel better. It also improves our physical fitness, which tends to make people feel better in general. Even small amounts of regular physical activity can improve your mental well-being, especially if it's doing something you enjoy. Physical activity is even a recommended treatment for some types of depression. You can get active at your own pace in your own way. There's no need to join a gym or even spend any money. Simple small changes in our day-to-day -day can make all the difference. Taking a brisk walk at lunchtime or walking to get where we're going, getting active in the garden or cycling once or twice a week are great options. If there's a type of activity you used to enjoy, think about how you could pick it up again. For example, there are lots of local groups and sports teams open to all levels of ability. What's more, studies show that time in green spaces is beneficial. So head to your local park if you can. If you need a little help fitting more physical activity into your day, try the Active 10 app. It helps you get short bursts of brisk walking into your day. There's also the fantastic Couch to 5K app, which will get you up and running in just nine weeks. Eating better can play a big role in our health and well-being. It won't come as a surprise to learn that what we eat and how much plays a big part in our physical health which can impact our mental health too. Ideally, we should aim to eat a healthy, balanced diet with plenty of fruit and veg. It's important to keep an eye on your calories and minimize foods that are high in sugar, fat, and salt. For helpful tips on eating a better diet, check out the One You website. Alcohol, caffeine, tobacco, and even drugs may seem tempting when we're stressed or tired. And when we use them to try and cope, the idea of stopping them can feel like it would make things even harder. But they can cause more problems than they solve, especially long term. All these habits can complicate our sleep patterns and affect how anxious and depressed we feel. So try cutting down or even quitting. And remember that there's support available. Alcohol in particular can worsen our moods. So cutting down can really help us feel better. For more help cutting down, you can download the Drink Free Days app and for help cutting back on drugs, visit the Talk to Frank website. As for cigarettes, stopping smoking is one of the best things you can do for your body and your brain. You'll breathe easier, feel better, and save money. Check out nhs.uk slash smokefree for advice and support on quitting. Whatever you choose to do, what's good for your body is good for your mind. At the end, we want to leave some questions for you. Hope you can impression your views in the comment section. We will also communicate with you in the comment section. With over 1,000 likes, 5 viewers will be selected in the comment areas to send one of our exquisite gifts. We will discuss with you uh, what other shop cares most do you know about your daily needs, shoulder and uh, lumbar spine? What other treatment do you know about neck, shoulder and back pains? Have you ever had a treatment for cervical, long back uh, and uh, leg pain symptoms? Do you know cervical spiders have a big impact on your daily life? Where do you learn about cervical spiders? At the same time, if you want to know more about cervical spiders, please send us emails zisen123 at students.usmmy Here are our video team's members in this video. Zhou Zhishen, Sun Yachen, Lu Shihua, Liu Xianwen, Muhammad Ali ahead. Thank you for watching. We hope you have a healthy life in the future. Thank you again.